Hey guys, we're back with another Mater Mac video. We got something cool and exciting to show you. I've been doing a little trialing and airing before I did the video so I could give you guys a good idea of what we're doing here. Uh, so let's get at it. First off, I want to say the sun is shining, which hasn't happened. Actually, this is the first week the sun's really been shining and it hasn't rained in probably a month and a half. So I'm really, really excited. We can finally get some stuff in the ground. Uh, hopefully the rest of the year is looking a little drier. Uh, we need some warm weather, but we'll take the little cooler weather over the rain every other day or every day at that fact um, over the other. So why am I talking to you about the Mater Mac machine again? Well, one, because I freaking love this thing. It is awesome. Uh, one of the best cedars I have ever come upon and it can do everything. And I want to explain one more thing that I decided to do to my planter to make a more diversified farm, a more diversified cedar. And let's get at it. So, like I said, I really wanted to make this a diversified machine. And one of the things I wanted to be able to do with it is to do small seeded crops as well as large seeded crops. Single row, double row, triple row. Uh, this year I was very fortunate. We incorporated this third unit right here which i think i did a video on earlier in the season uh this has really changed uh my efficiencies we were doing three rows before but we were moving the units over dropping them in the middle raising things up now we're planting three rows across and it is amazing uh the efficiency and the time is just it's there obviously it makes sense um what i want to show you right here is you guys are probably looking at these closing wheels they look a little different um, this is your traditional V closing wheel right here, uh, just like you'd find. Um, this is for regular soil. If you look on my other videos, you'll see more of a, a tapered closing wheel or a notched wheel. Those are more for no-till or bigger seed. Um, uh, but this is the traditional closing wheel that comes on these Mater Max. I was doing research and I really wanted to find something that I could adequately seed small seed with with this planter and i started talking to my rep in italy i started talking to my rep uh in pennsylvania and they told me that there was this new product called coming out called the farm flex wheel for these 8200 series planters um and that's what this is right here this is the farm flex uh, wheel this is, as you can see, it's a rubber wheel right here. It's kind of tapered in the middle, um, but this is replacing this V wheel over here, mainly for small seeded crops. And as anyone knows, small seeded crops, you're looking to just kind of compress the soil as you go through and plant instead of making a hill like this V over here would be doing. So I found these, I looked to invest in these. I actually got a grant to get these um, I only have two because I originally, when I ordered these and got the grant, I only had two units. Um, but this is kind of cool because I can trial and error right now what, what we're doing. So, um, in hindsight, I'll just right off the bat, these are like a good $600 a piece. Uh, so they're not cheap. Uh, they are a pretty nice design. I'll show you quickly the transforming over from one to the other and kind of the pros and cons of that. Um, it's not a simple thing. It, it's not going to be a two second project. Uh, so if you are looking to invest in something like this, you know, just, just think, uh, the time might be there a little bit more if you're constantly switching back from large seed to small seed, but farm flex wheels, I want to show you how they get assembled a little bit, uh, how they work and then what it looks like in the field. So let's get to it. So right here, we're looking at the farm flex wheel right in front of me. Uh, right off the bat, a couple things you might notice is that it's got this spring tensioner here, just like your regular V-wheel does, except that's down in here. Um, the bolt-up is a little different. There's actually four bolts that holds this on versus the regular V-wheel's got two. One up here, one down here. Um, this one's kind of where the main shaft sits on here, and then this is where your spring tensioner sits uh, on this one this one's a little more intricate and i'll tell you why and uh, uh after kind of playing around with this and figuring 
figuring out how it goes together. It makes sense why they did this. Um, at the same time, it's not the easiest thing to assemble on and off quickly. Uh, but let's start. You got the wheel right here, that rubber wheel I was telling you about. Right here, you got a spring tensioner, so this will help. As you can see, this is pretty tensioned. I can't lift that up with my hand at all. Um, so this holds your tension. You got three notches right here that gives you your tension down on your press wheel. The other cool thing I want to show you guys with this farm flex wheel setup is that right here you got this neat little um, furrower closer. And you know when I was looking at the planter to start, I was really thinking, huh, I wonder if this wheel's gonna gonna help cover the seed bed enough. And when this parts came in and I was talking to the rep, uh, we were talking about this part. Um, I don't know the exact name to it. We've been calling these spoons. Um, if you want to call them closers or furrow closers, uh, you name it. But these are what closes the furrow, if you will. So this will actually go through the soil and it will cover the seed bed. I can show you right here, actually. So those spoons will go through and they will cover the seed bed. And then that press wheel is going down after it and pressing through. Um, I'll talk about this in a minute, but just to give you a reference, so, you know, you have your cutters right here on your planter, which are cutting your furrower, and then you got your depth gauge press wheels, which are pressing down, uh, doing your gauge, and then these little spoons here coming through, and that's what's putting the soil over your seed, and right now we're only seeding about, um, probably that deep, so about half an inch or so, um, so that's what these spoons do. They go through and they just kind of pull the soil back in. Uh, you have three adjustments on these actually for your tension on how much tension you want down on your spoons. I have them all the way down right now um, because I'm having a little bit of an issue getting the soil to actually thoroughly cover. Um, and I'm trying to get as much soil over that as possible because it seems like it's a little tricky to fully cover it with this, but it seems to be working uh, fairly well, as you can see. Uh, the other thing I want to show you, uh, show you guys is that the setup with the bolting is a little different, and this might be hard to show on video. So if someone's interested, I can do another video and get that to you. But you have four bolt setups here. You actually, there's one up here that is holding your main shaft, as you can see right there. Your next one down is where your spring your spring sits. Uh, and the other thing I wanna explain to you guys is that this part right here, these spoons, they're a totally different assembly to your actual farm flex wheel, uh, which is something to consider. So bolting these up, you're actually dealing with three different parts. You got this one and this one on this side, and then you got this whole wheel. Uh, after putting it together, it wasn't that bad, but it took a little bit of time. Um, and so then down here you have, this is a cool thing they made up, which I might not be able to show you with how the wheel sits right now. Um, but these are actually locking nuts right here. They, they'll actually, this will push up and you can lock these in place. Uh, what they have that for, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe in really, really sandy soils where, you know, maybe the soil just kind of fluffs over your seed already. Uh, you can lock these up out of the way. But from what I'm noticing is that these are essential to this operation right here. Uh, so this bolt essentially just kind of holds this unit together through. It's also holding these lock nuts, which twist back and forth um, like so to lock back and forth. Uh, and then you have another bolt right here. So this is your fourth and this just kind of locks both sides together, kind of holds things together. So you're dealing with four bolts here uh, and it's kind of piecing them together through the middle. Um, like I said, not the easiest thing to put together, but also not, not the worst. So um, we're out here trialing this. Uh, I just did one pass here to see uh, we're seating beets right now. Um, you can see the difference with the veed wheel on the right here and then your closing wheel here the farm flex wheel so you're really getting this pressing down the edges with the farm flex wheel um, and you're getting not as much compaction but i think it'll be enough in the center uh, with the farm flex wheel as well uh, we're still doing some trialing on if 
this concave wheel that you're seeing right here is going to work well with the small seated stuff because what we really want is a firm placement all the way through uh, so we might take some duct tape and wrap the wheel quick uh, just to give some more firmness in the middle to see if that helps with anything uh, but for now i'm going to try this as it is see what it does and we're going to seed some beets and spinach today so uh, really cool design from mater mac again i am impressed this is a very well made part um, definitely well thought uh, definitely taking some time to figure out how it goes on to the actual unit um, without direction took me some time but i figured out uh, the tension works pretty well this is actually a little bit harder to pull back than that one i think just because how it's designed and how it tensions i'm on the excuse me i'm on the center one right now for the actual wheel tension uh, and that seems to be enough i was noticing on the high tension so the most tension down i was getting um it was almost kind of lifting the unit up a little bit i think uh with how much down pressure it was giving and i wasn't getting that nice coverage with the soil so um, a lot of trial and erring erroring here a lot of trial and erroring here um these are pretty new i don't think a lot of people have them uh i only know of one other guy that these were going to in texas um so if you have any questions please let me know i'll try to do some videos with one of my crews one of these days of actually uh as the planter moves right now i'm a one-man show out here so um that's the wheel let me give you a quick walk around of the whole thing so you can see it show you what the other side looks like quickly so right here's your handle you pull that back which will release your spring tension this right here actually moves up and down to lock your spring there uh, this is just the other side of the wheel there and then these are your other bolt assemblies down here and your tensioner here um, so nice little design there's the spoons on the other side um, <clears throat> and we're gonna see what this does uh, one last thing I want to say is what I'm trying to figure out here is if your depth is, is going to change at all. I'm not sure based off how these are actually going to press into the soil versus your V-wheel making a hill. Um, this is only just pressing. So your depth, you might need a little deeper. It might need to be the same. I went down a notch or two on mine um, just to see what that would do. And um, I'm pretty happy with where it's laying right now. Um, for beets, I'm usually planting on the first two notches. Um, and this one, I dropped it, dropped it down to the third notches. Um, and that's giving me just about half an inch of depth. So not too much, not too little. But we're liking it so far. Let's go plant some beets and get some spinach in for the fall.